A Chinese finger trap is a special suture pattern that's used to secure a tube to a patient. An example of this might be if the doctor asks you to secure a nasogastric tube to a cat. We're not going to start off using the same suture patterns and knots that we've been learning all along. This one's a little different. Let's begin by holding our tissue forceps in our left hand with a pencil grip. Our needle holders will be in our right hand with our thumb and ring finger in the finger rings. Our pointer finger extended forward and this will help stabilize the needle as we pass it through the tissue. The needle holders will be used to grasp the needle two-thirds of the way along the body of the needle and your needle will be perpendicular to your needle holders. One unique thing about this suture pattern is you will be required to have a significant length of suture. And you will see why in just a moment. First off, we do need to secure our suture material to our patient. So you will grasp some of your tissue, pass your needle through the tissue or make a bite. It might seem a little strange because you're not making a bite over an incision. At this point, I'm going to put down my instruments and I'm going to pull my suture, oops, pull my suture so that it's equal length on either side and I'm going to go ahead and remove my needle because you're not going to need it after this. So as you can see, I have equal lengths of suture. Our first knot is actually going to be a surgeon's knot, but you're not going to be able to perform it the same way if you've removed your needle. We're basically going to pretend like we're tying our shoe or making a shoestring knot. So here's our two shoestrings. We're going to crisscross them and we're going to pass the one side through the loop, just like a shoestring. Now to make this secure like a surgeon's knot, we need to pass it through one more time. So do the same thing over again. As you can see, we have more of a line in the middle. Go ahead and bring that back down to your tissue. You are still left with even lengths of suture. To begin our suture pattern, we're going to take our suture and bring it back or up to the other side of our tube. So this is what you're going to see. Take both of those ends and just crisscross them. You're not going to do a shoestring, you're just making an X on the other side of your suture or your tube. Let's see if we can make it so it's obvious for you. So can everybody see that X? Okay. We're going to bring our suture back to where we started and we're going to put another shoestring. So cross it over like you tie your shoe. We're only going to do one crossover. We don't need to do two. If you want to, you can. It's not going to count against you. So we have our shoestring knot, an X on the other side, and a shoestring knot back at the starting side. Let's go ahead and do that several more times. Bring everything back, crisscross, and bring your suture back forward. Let's do a shoestring knot. Now I'm going to bring this back down so that you can see what we've got so far. See how you've got a little X and a little X. Take notice on how close I've made these. That's a very important aspect of a Chinese finger trap. Okay, since I already have my shoestring knot, I'm going to go back around the back, crisscross, and come forward do my shoestring knot.
tighten it down. You don't want to tighten it so much that you put a kink in your tube, but you do need to have it secure and snug up against the tube. Bring it back, crisscross, come forward, do your shoestring knot. Okay, I'm going to show this to you again. So I'm starting to get a little X pattern up the back. The front side is going to kind of look like a little X's too, but there's little knots in the center of them. So got my shoestring knot, go back, crisscross, come forward. Shoestring knot. Go back, crisscross, come forward, shoestring knot. Back, forward, shoestring knot. Okay, I should be saying go backwards, X, or crisscross, and shoestring knot. To make it easier, you can keep saying that. Back, cross, shoestring knot. Okay, and here's what I've got. Now I'm going to finish this off by doing another surgeon's knot or a double shoestring knot. So I'm going to make my shoestring knot, wrap it around once wrap it around twice. I'm going to do another knot, so a single shoestring knot, another shoestring knot, and another shoestring knot. That's basically four throws. Cut my ends. Now, if you've done your suturing correctly, you will be able to pick up your tube and it won't pull through the opening. The reason why this is considered a Chinese finger trap is if you remember those little traps that you can buy that you put over your fingers and if you pull them out you're stuck. If you push your fingers in and then push the trap forward you can actually remove your finger. If these stay like this, you can't pull this tube out. But if you shrink all these things down to the other side, you will be able to move this tube back and forth. So that is why it's called a Chinese finger trap. This one will take a little bit of practice once you get to figure out your shoestring knots and your crisscrosses. So that is a Chinese finger trap.